Welcome back to the fantastic BE class. Kenny and Elaine are always here to bring you more about behavior economics. In the previous episode, we have talked about the psychological pricing, the four strategies carrying the magic power leading to more purchase. It affects our decision making in a secret way. Indeed, but what are we going to talk about in today's lesson, Elaine? Let's first start with a game, shall we? Well, why not? Even if you want to gamble, I'm just joking. But I'm not. Let's play gambling. Here is one hundred dollars, and we are going to divide it and share it. I will decide how to split it and offer you the deal. Then you will decide whether to accept or reject. If you agree with my suggestion, we can keep the money according to the proposal. However, if you refuse the splitting, neither of us will get the money. I get it. Though、so、the game depends on our collaboration, you must be careful to make the choice. Otherwise. We will perish together. Okay, so the easiest and equal way is this. Round one. I will split it into fifty-fifty. Will you take it? Yeah, of course. I believe that's the most common result of the game. Yes, but what if we split it in other ways? Round two. I get one hundred and you get nothing. But wait, I will promise to buy you a meal after that. Are you crazy? I refuse. You're a big liar. Do not even think about it. Well, I know it won't work that easily. Okay, round three. Let's split it into seventy thirty. It's way more than getting nothing, right? Uh uh, no way. We've been working together for four episodes of Fantastic Beat Class, and finally, I expose your greedy, evil heart. No, let's calm down and reconsider the problem. If you refuse my plan, you will get nothing. But if you accept my suggestion, you will get thirty dollars at least. Why do you choose to lose it? My rational brain tells me to refuse because I won't let the trick work. Then, Kenny, you are very wrong. If we think about this rationally through the point of view of traditional economics theory, even if I offer you ninety-nine dollars ninety-nine cent over one cent, you will accept it. After all, a cent is better than nothing. However, you did something opposite. Thus, congratulations! You are competent to be the member of Irrational B E class. Huh? <laughs> Thank you, Elaine. Although it sounds like a mock, and you remind me of the game of this gambling. It is called Ultimatum Game, the famous case of non-zero sum game. People like me not only care about our own games, we also care about the justice of the game, never letting someone greedy as you to control it. Sorry, my bad. I will apologize later. Actually, when ultimatum game is applied as an experiment, typically it will be played only once, so that reciprocation and negotiation is not an issue. Yes, the first game was played in 1982 at Humboldt University in Berlin, Germany, with the support of three professors, such as Werner Guth. 42 students took part in a fun game theory experiment called Ultimatum. In order to prevent the interaction between two players, which will affect the result, the experiment adopted the double-blind method. Neither the proposer nor the responder knows who the other is. After experiment rules were announced, proposer like me had one day to think carefully and come up with the proposal to be given to the experimenter. Then the experimenter handed over the proposal to a responder like you, who decided to refuse or accept it. According to the principle of benefit maximization, the equilibrium point of the game is very clear. For respondents who make decisions, no matter how many, if not zero, accepting will always have more benefits. Thus, they should always accept, except for the case of hundred over zero. Since the responder can accept anything more than zero, the proposer will give the other a small sum of money for his own benefit. That's according to traditional economics. However, the experimental results show that the players rely more on their fairness ideas rather than the maximization of their gains to determine the result of the game. The tendency of fairness distribution in the experiment is not consistent with the hypothesis of economic men in traditional economics. Thus, the game became the primary experiment in behavior economics, just as shown through me and Kenny's game. To sum up. 
ultimatum game challenged the forever accuracy of traditional economics and serves as a footstone of behavior economics. Sometimes I think behavior economics is acting like a magic mirror. All the greedy and irrational nature of human is revealed. Indeed, and that's why BE is so attractive, and that's why we, the key, is making this fantastic BE class. Yes, and that's all about today's lesson about automation game. Thank you for your watching. Please remember to subscribe and leave your comments before you go. See, See you, you next time. time.